The Fed has to raise interest rates. There is no way it can be avoided. It's the smartest thing for the government to do and take steps to ensure we don't slam back down the recession highway. And how dare you question Janet Yellen, you non-believer. It did seem that way late last year as the inevitable happened. The Fed raised interest rates just enough to get the ball rolling again. And all was right with the world, or at least that part of the world that was trying to keep themselves from even whispering the dreaded R word. The word that is right back in the faces of the government, Yellen, Wall Street, and you. Money Master Time. Welcome back to veteran economist, syndicated columnist, read at Newsmax.com, and University of Maryland professor of business, Peter Morisi. Peter, good to talk to you again, so let's get right to this here. People saying now that Janet Yellen lost their bet. They found themselves the Fed that is wrong-footed by the stronger dollar, and they are now hiding in abject shame. What say you? Oh, I don't think they're hiding in abject shame. I think it was very difficult for anyone to anticipate that China would pick the month of January to collapse. Uh, no one can really forecast those kinds of events. Uh, I think they raised rates too late is what the real issue is. They had ample opportunity earlier in the year, and now they're kind of stuck in the middle of things. Uh, it's much worse than if they'd gotten a few rate increases in first. Now they're going to have to pause in all likelihood. Any doubt in your mind, though, that when they do meet on Tuesday and Wednesday that they will hold the rates steady and they're not going to try and jack them up anymore, at least not at this early stage? Oh, they won't jack them up anymore right now. The real question is, is will they acknowledge world conditions? Uh, they're slowly acknowledging, I think, that the world around them is changing somewhat. And, and they do that by lowering their target rate for the long term each time they, they meet or every several times because capital doesn't need to be priced quite so high as it once was, but it certainly needs a bigger price than zero. Why so slow to react then, Peter? I mean, these people are experts. They're supposed to be able to read tea leaves. Well, you got to remember, these are the same experts that told us to get rid of Glass-Steagall. You know, both administrations, whether it's the Bush administration or the Obama administration, or even going further back, Clinton and, and so forth, they all go to Harvard and Yale to get their economists, where people live off of dead people's money. They're kind of like kennel-fed dogs. They really don't know how to hunt in the wild, and they really aren't that much in touch with the real world. You know, folks do criticize academics for having their heads in the clouds. And when you look at the academics that are put forward to them, the Larry Summers, the, the Janet Yellens, and so forth, can you blame them? <laughs> Not at all. Well put. Uh, you know, I'm what get... you really got to do is come to us. You know, we have dairy yeah, cows on my campus. We worry about manufacturing. We have to pay our way in the world by raising the money every year. It looks a lot like a business, honest to God. <laughs> I'm going to get you know, one of those I mean, experts here in just a minute. Let, let, let's face it. Since Janet got her first fellowships for graduate school, has she really ever had to worry about where it's coming from? You're not a fan of Janet Yellen, though, are you? Well, it's more the cabal. It's the cabal. It's the cabal she represents, uh, sort of elite economists who were chosen at the age of 17 to go to MIT, and somehow or other they are bestowed with all of the wisdom of Solomon, when really they, they have more, you know, the common sense of say, oh, who was George Bush's vice, the first George Bush's vice president? It's an interesting question you pose. Which they don't yes, don't you remember that fellow uh, yes. from Indiana? Yes, yes, Anyway, they seem to have I'm this leaving it go sense. for right now because you're making the good point. <laughs> I want to talk about one of those strategists, if you will, because you're talking about academics here. Here's Albert Edwards. He is the strategist at Societe Generale. He says that this will be the biggest stock market crash in a generation, worse than the financial crisis. Says the U.S. stock market could plunge as much as 75 percent. All right. Is he just one of these academics then that are just putting the numbers together or does he really know what he's talking about? No, he's a guy like me who's out there in the world. And he's trying to basically do what a lot of people have done in the past. Every year, someone predicts that this year will be the year of the great crash. A year from now, if he's wrong, no one will remember that he said it or who he is. <laughs> but if he's right, they'll say, oh, he's so damn smart. Okay? Now, you know, in fact, a lot of people said that about the last crash, but only a very few got the publicity because they were in a position to get it, so they got the credit. But every year someone says something like that, the, you, I'll be impressed when someone calls two of those in a row. Okay, but you as know, you look at it, I mean... It, 2008 it, it, and is calling this one in is right, then I'll get impressed fast. Okay, but as you look at him, I mean, stating what you just said here, do you think that he's on a right track here. Is it po Well, of course it's possible he's right, but is it likely he's right? Well, let's put it this way. He picked a good year to make the bet. 
<laughs> if it's ever going to happen, this is likely the year. Because there's really a lot of things going the wrong way. And that's one of the things that disturbs me so much about the gang at the Fed, is conditions have been changing very rapidly. It's like the portfolio manager. I had a portfolio manager for a small portion of my retirement stuff who got me into oil and gold three years ago. That was okay then. But as things started to change, he kept saying, well, there's real underlying value there. It's really going to come back. And I had to tell him, you know, last December, Charlie, I'm 67 years old. I don't think I'm going to be around for the comeback of oil. I, I don't think I really can make this bet. And I got out before things really got bad. I got out while I still had as much money as I put in. And okay. I wrote it up, wrote it down to even. 30 seconds left then. Here's another bet. The Wall Street Journal says the omens have aligned again. The recession indicators are flashing red. Industrial production growth in China is slowing. Warning signs decline in U.S. industrial production. How's their bet? Well, they also said in that article it's not certain that it all could go that way. Just because those indicators in, you know, showed it in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen again. Uh, I think this is why this is a good year to make the bet that things could go wrong. But that doesn't mean that they will. I remember Ben Bernanke in a moment of honesty saying that he that economists generally weren't very good at picking turning points. That is when the economy is going to go up or when it's going to go down. The points of inflection, we say. Uh, and he didn't pretend to be any better than anyone else. Well, neither do I. At the end I of mean, the day, we look. We are at a moment of peril. Let's Peter, leave it at that. No matter how we slice it, at the end of the day, it's all like going to Vegas and deciding which game and how much money you're going to gamble. Uh, we, we try to gamble a little less here. Peter Marisi, always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. It's only a movie. Pair it with the book and the witness accounts. There's good reason why 13 Hours is a film no one should ignore. Next on The Hardline.